My name is Jane Beadle. I've always preferred Jean. Jane just sounds so ordinary. And I am no ordinary woman. I was born in Melbourne on the 1st of January, 1868, decades before Federation. In fact, it was on my 33rd birthday that this country of ours finally became a nation. And by the time I turned 34, as a non-Indigenous woman, I was allowed to vote. Times were very hard back then, especially for those who had so little. <laughs> Both in Victoria and Western Australia. I was appalled when I saw the sweat labour conditions in the Melbourne clothing factories. Children, widows, single women with no choice but to work there, forced to work there or starve. The stench in those places was appalling. Cleanliness, <laughs> that didn't exist and they were very unsafe. The hours were long and the pay very, very poor. It was witnessing these atrocious conditions in the sweatshops that I was inspired to dedicate my life to the betterment of working conditions for women and children. Not something many people were doing then. Blind eyes and all that. I was the daughter of a miner, so I knew what hard work was. So I was determined to follow through with this cause. In 1898, I was one of the founding members of the Women's Political and Social Crusade and the Women's Labour Organisation in Victoria. In 1888, I married my husband, Henry Beadle, an iron moulder, and we had three children. But that didn't slow down my passion. On the contrary, it just fired me up to continue fighting for this cause. It was in 1901 that we decided to move to Western Australia to make a better life for our family. And it was in Fremantle in 1905 that I established the Women's Labour League. And 12 months later, when we'd moved to Boulder, I established the Eastern Goldfields Women's Labour League. <laughs> Are you seeing a pattern here? We had separate meetings in Kalgoorlie and Boulder, as they were still very separate towns back then. Our meetings, well, let's say there was a lot of criticism and discrimination. The Sun newspaper described us as a convention of cackle. <laughs> but I knew that if women were to play an equal role in the labour movement, then we had to be active both in social and in industrial causes. <laughs> Every time I heard the phrase a woman's frail tad scoff and remark that sometimes it's the man left clinging to the vine. <laughs> With the League established, we successfully campaigned for maternity ward at the Border Hospital, the registration of nurses, the establishment of a foundling home for abandoned babies. We campaigned on behalf of the Boulder shop assistants, all women, for better pay and more importantly, sh shorter working hours. The shifts these girls were expected to work were criminally long by today's standards, but sadly, the norm before we took up the fight. And I never gave up the fight. I would speak at public meetings, organize fundraisers for strikers' families, run public forums, travel to other goldfield towns, establishing league branches where none existed before, and represented the league on many labour bodies. Other things that we managed to establish were subsidised beds in the maternity ward, seats on the public footpath, toilets in the central business and shopping districts. Through my activism, 
I was described as the grand old lady of the Labour Party through my decades of work. We could have left out the old, thank you very much. I was recognised as a fluent public speaker, an excellent organiser and a committed socialist and reformer. It was essential, I always believed, to meet the real needs of the people and to stop the waste of human life, human abilities and capabilities. In 1914, we moved back to Perth, but not before I donated a presentation purse of sovereigns gifted to me to the striking woodcutters. In Perth, I became a founding member of the Women's Labour Club. We campaigned on issues such as peace and disarmament, women's health, education, maternity allowances, child endowment, pensions. Remember, this was 1914. Some of these things we do have today, but some, sadly, we are still fighting for. I was one of the first women appointed a Justice of the Peace in Western Australia. And I was an honorary justice on the Children's Court. I was a foundation member of the Women's Justices Association. I was also active in the establishment of the King Edward Memorial Hospital for Women and served as its secretary for nearly 20 years. In recognition of this, the hospital annually award the Jean Beadle Scholarship <laughs> and I'm so grateful they called it the Jean not the Jane Beadle Scholarship.